You mute. I think you mute. Oh, hello. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, I can oh. hear you now. <laughs> Good morning and a warm welcome to the Sutong Zhou uh, collection of Chinese scrolls and fan paintings webinar presented by the Wikidata Chinese Cultural Heritage Group in partnership with Colossus in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Chinese American Librarians Association. My name is Greta Hung, the Cataloging and Metadata Strategies Librarian at San Diego State University. I'm the coordinator of today's webinar and I'm thrilled to be part of this event. Before we get started, let's get to know the groups that planned and supported today's webinar. I'm a member of Wikidata Chinese Culture Heritage Group. Our Wikidata group proposed and planned this event. We were formed in October 2020 with Chinese American librarians from several institutions. Our group has done multiple projects and presented our findings about characteristics of big data related to um, Chinese cultural heritage, data models for um, Chinese women uh, points and historical places, and different data visualizations. You can find more information about our group's work on our Wikidata page, and I will drop the link later in the chat. Today is the second event of our speaker series supported by Kala. Since 1973, the Chinese American Librarians Association is a leading organization supporting diversity and equity in the library profession. We appreciate Kala's support for this event. Slides and recording of today's event will be uploaded to Colossus as the Colossus Institution Repository. Colossus hosts scholarly works and educational materials from its members and library professionals in the library and information science fields. And it also archives Colossus official documents, conference materials, and Chinese cultural heritage collections. Currently, um, there are over 600 items have been added to Colossus' open and private collections. Um, Kala, Kala 50th anniversary has uh, a collection about our Wikidata group. If you are interested, feel free to take a look. Today, we are thrilled to have Ling Mo, the digital collections librarian at the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee, as our guest speaker. Over the years, Ling Mo has been involved in digital collections projects, including Milwaukee Polonia Digital Collection, the mark of the march on Milwaukee Civil Rights Historical Project, History Project, NEH Grant Project, Saving and Sharing the AGS Library Historic Nitrate Negative Images, and So Tung Zhou Collection of Chinese Scrolls and Fan Paintings. We encourage you to actively participate in the discussion and ask questions. You can use the chat function or Q&A function to post your questions, and we'll try to address as many as possible during the Q&A session after Ling's talk. And let's begin, Ling, please take it over. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for inviting me to speak at Kala web webinar series, and thank to Greta for the communication. The honor is mine. Uh, let me share my uh, screen first. Okay, everyone see it? Yes. Okay, today I'm going to uh, talk about a very interesting uh, collection we've made. Ce Zhongzhou collection of Chinese scrolls and fan paintings and introduce the background of this collection a little bit and share the experience of how we create this amazing collection. Uh, in the following presentation, I will just call the collection as Chinese Scroll Collection. So I don't need to say the very long full name of the collection every time I mention it. And uh, I just share my slide like this. So I, you know, I can see the window of Zoom. Um, okay. Here's, here are some topics we are going to touch today. Uh, uh, how we got this collection, how we digitize this collection, how we build uh, bilingual metadata, and how we translate the content 
and uh, control vocabulary. <clears throat> so we got this uh, collection in 2005. Professor Zhou, Che Zhong Zhou, donate part of his personal collection of uh, uh, painting scroll and painting uh, to us. And it's actually only half part of his collection. The other half part of his collection goes to Hong Kong Baptist University and uh, was published as an album. Uh, on the right side, you see the picture of the front cover of uh, the album. Uh, I, I'm kind of curious what they, they got, what's the difference between uh, the other half and, and the our half. So I, I, find, I found a few copy in the States in some library. And so I, I use interlibrary loan to borrow one and to take a look. So everyone who is, anyone who is interested in this uh, album, you can try interlibrary loan. <clears throat> and part of the deal um, between UW and, and Professor Joe is that um, we need to provide online access um, of this collection uh to uh the users so um we kind of start this um, project i think it's on uh, 2011 uh as a we do have a bit as a pilot project then we finish it around uh, 2012 and put it online so professor Che Zhong Zhou. <clears throat> He's a historian, a poet, and a writer. Uh, his, this is her, his, two, of, two of his major work. One is he is an author of May Force Movement, Wu Si Yun Dong. Um, and uh, he is also a very famous scholar. He's a big guy of radiology. Radiology is academic study of dream of the red chamber, Hong Lou Meng. Okay, so on the right side, you can see a picture of Professor Zhou and um, the front cover of his two books. And he is also a professor in the Department of uh, East Asian Language and uh, Literature at U University of Wisconsin Madison. Uh, okay, um, this is uh, 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 some data of this collection. Uh, um, it includes 129 items, 51 scrolls, 22 couplets, 28 fans, and six banners. And most of this work is this uh, is made from 18th to through the 20th century. Some of these objects, we can identify uh, the exact date, exact time uh, it was created. So we know like 18th century and or 19th century or 20th century. But some of them we couldn't identify. So we see like 16 unknown. And some of those we can only know uh, a, a fuzzy period of time between when to when. So we put it like between 18th to 19th century or 19th to 20th centuries. And um, there are, for those which we can identify, there are 29 different creators. Um, uh, some are uh, professional artists and some are not. I think uh, many of you might know that um, some of the artists in Chinese, their primary uh, identities like uh, scholars or um, politicians. And, um, but they are like very good at writing or painting. So they are the, the, their second identity is artist. 
Um, it's actually not our responsibility or we don't have the ex expertise to make a judgment to 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 know if this artwork are, are fake or not. So I seek help to uh, National Palace Museum uh, in Taipei. Um, as a citizen, I, I, they kind of provide um, surveys to us. So, but I need to bring the, the physical things to uh, the museum. Uh, so I send an email to them and they, when they know our situation is not possible, I bring the item, the object to them. And also it was kind of limit the number to five. Um, they still give me a, a, a non-official opinion. So um, most of um, the, the, object we have is probably authentic. Okay, there's some, show you some format of our, uh, uh, of this collection. There's scroll painting and there's couplet and there's banners and it, there's fan painting. Fan painting, it, it sometimes it's just directly Pen on a fan, but for this, it's just you know the paper part, the the stick part or the bamboo stick part was removed, and that's the other style of fan painting is round fan, it's not fold fan. Uh, that's how we digitize it. We had very limited equipment. Um, so we kind of develop uh, a, a way to digitize this object because most of those objects, um, the size is is pretty big. So if you just use the camera to take one shot, the resolution will be too low. So we develop a, a hanging system like hem and put that background around it so we can adjust the height of the object, hand it up and down to keep it on a, a same distance between camera and the objects and take multiple pictures and then stitch them together to get a high enough uh, resolution. Um, but as you can see, uh, some of uh, this object uh, in a very bad condition. Um, I don't think that Professor Charles House has enough wall to hang all of these collections. So we usually um, roll these scrolls up when we store them. But you know, in Wisconsin, in the summer, it's very humid. In the winter, it's very dry. So um, the kid part of the collection, the condition is not very good. So for things like this, we it's too fragile to be hand up and it's not possible for us to digitize them back to them. So um, there's still a few of uh, objects in this collection we, we haven't digitized yet. And we do have a newer uh, stand that we might be able to find a way to overcome those issues. So uh, we still um, are in discussion if we want to finish the rest of the collection. <clears throat> Okay, metadata. I think most of people, audience here are interested in metadata. We don't have to go through all of this. You, you guys probably know more metadata than me. Um, most of uh, uh, today's discussion will focus on descriptive metadata. So, um, when we 
see this collection, when we decide to create this collection, the first discussion is um, uh, how we create metadata, what makes more sense. Uh, this collection located in the states <clears throat> and uh, our other our other digital collection is all in English and most of our uh, the user of our website is probably English speaker so it makes sense that we use um, English as uh, the prime language of the metadata but uh, in the other hand the content is all in Chinese so it doesn't make sense if we just put English metadata and um, there might be um, uh, many other use outside the states who will be interested in um, uh, this collection, but they probably don't have, they don't speak English, they don't read English. So we kind of start to have an idea to create um, bilingual metadata of this collection is kind of a challenge to us. We talk about how we translate it <coughs> and how much effort to put onto it, but um, this collection is relatively a smaller collection than the other collection. We have collection which contain maybe more than like a hundred thousand records in one collection, but this collection is just a um, hundred and twenty nine objects. So uh, for us, it's kind of a uh, interesting um, experiment. Uh, we use Dublin Core as our uh, metadata schema. I think that is widely used um, by digital collections and we use ContentDM as our platform. <clears throat> so ContentDM allowed us to customize um, the Dublin Core metadata template which can um, map to the um, uh, original Dublin Core metadata field. I think that would be good for harvest. And then we need to do transcribing, translation, um, uh, and, and like from um, original script to modern Chinese and modern Chinese to English. We will talk about, about the detail in uh, in the later uh, presentation. And also mapping the control vocabulary term between uh, different languages. <coughs> and uh, I don't know which step is the uh, which is before which. Uh, we kind of need to, when we start to do this collection, we find out that we need to like have a more detail, um, uh, have a plan for it. So we create the uh, input guideline for most of the important field. Uh, so we won't forget what, we decide for which field. Okay, that's our customized uh, metadata template. It includes more than 50 uh, fields. Um, most of the uh, uh, field has parallel field, like this artist, we have artist, we have zuozi, which means artist. Uh, creator, okay, an artist bio and do the same thing, which is creator's uh, uh, bio. So it's one Chinese, one English, one Chinese, one English, one Chinese, except title. Type to uh, 
we will talk about the reason why we put both language in title. And the other uh, <coughs> uh, the other there are other two fields we don't have uh, corresponds um, uh, Chinese field because we we did we couldn't find the corresponds uh, Chinese thesaurus. Okay, as we mentioned that uh, we have <clears throat> three kind of metadata input. The first one is we put bilingual metadata in one field, which is title. The second is we only put monolingual metadata in one field, which happened in TGM, the thoroughs of graphic materials and subject heading library Congress. And all the others, we put uh, parallel bilingual records in two parallel fields. <clears throat> um, it, the language issue happened not just in uh, the metadata, it actually happened in uh, the collection name. <clears throat> Uh, we usually translate a Chinese name to English, translate by pronunciation, not by the meaning. We, you know, we know our Chinese name, many of the names has some um, meanings, but we don't translate that way. We translate by pronunciation or we call pinyin. <clears throat> And also the problem is there are not just one pin system. There are um, a couple of different Chinese pin system, like Hanyu pin or Tongyong pin in or the others. And the different regions use different pin system. <clears throat> and different institutions use different pin system. And even in the same region, same place, um, they might use different pin system over time. So we have to decide how, what kind of pin system we use for Zhou Cezhong, Cezhong Zhou's name. Cezhong Zhou was used by Professor Zhou himself, as well as we can see it on uh, UW Medicine official records on their website and also used for his publication. So uh, after discussion, we decide use Che Zhong Zhou, you know, the, the, the TTC one um, in the collection name to reflect the fact and respect Professor Zhou. But we also see this um, CZZ, Che Zhong Zhou, uh, in the records, in Library of Congress name authority headings. So we use this, um, you know, it's also kind of another official source. We use this in the collector field and also um, it's like we do use um, the name in LC name authority headings for the artist in artist field. That's uh, the example of the uh, bilingual um, records. That's main text. See, actually, main text, the English version is translated from Chinese version, but we put English first. And uh, you can see um, subject LC has no Chinese version because um, the subject heading, the control vocabulary, we kind of hesitate to translate it by ourselves. So for this um, um, field, we just leave it uh, monolingual, just use uh, the English version. But for AAT, we find the uh, uh, Chinese version, Pithora, so 
we can use both language. Um, uh, for metadata records, it's kind of we there are two parts. The first part is we use um, natural language. The other part is we use control uh, vocabulary. Um, there's some <clears throat> um, major field we put extra effort into it. The, the title field, artist, biography, and main text, and seal content. Uh, okay. Okay. First, title. Um, uh, at first, we think title should, like the other field, we, we should have a title field in English and another title field, Delta, in Chinese. But, and then we realized that if we, uh, the, the grid, mu grid view mode um, on content DM only shows title field. Uh, so if there is some, a user who use this kind of mode of view, then the user will only be able to see one language which might be inconvenient convenient. So uh, because of this, we can say it's technical issue. So we decide to put both language in one field. Uh, <clears throat> the biography, uh, we try to give the user some background of the authors or creators. Um, uh, we we don't want to we don't want to make this too long, but we might to we want to give uh, the user an idea of who this guy is and what is his major contribution. But when we work on this, we find out that uh, we need to put some extra study on it. Like, um, <clears throat> like different uh, system of their um, officials. And for example, like, um, you know, Chinese China has imperial examination and different position. They have different proper name, so we need to do this kind of um, uh, research, and then um, we we draft a Chinese version and then translate it. And some creators or artists uh, were never be identified. And uh, the main text is kind of also very challenging to us. We we are probably too ambitious. We try to because um, we think that makes sense if the user knows, you know, especially for non-Chinese or English user to know. Um, what are these words talking about? So we decided to translate them as far as we could. I don't think we finished all of them. Some still too challenge to us. So it's not just one step translation. Um, it's kind of multiple step works and in its um, extra research on it. <clears throat> no, so the first, because over time Chinese, you know, Chinese, Chinese um, script de develop a lot of different style, um, like bronze script, seal scripts, cursive script, and the others. 
The problem is um, like this calligraphy artwork, although, you know, Qin Dynasty person, they don't use bronze script anymore, but when they do their artwork, they might still use those Asian script. So the first step is we need to recognize the content. This um, I need everyone knows this still hard to to a Chinese speaker. And even we recognize those words that it doesn't mean I know what it says. We need to translate it because it might has different form of um, it might be like poetry, uh, an essay, and uh, um, even it's just an essay, the syntax or grammar might be different with what we, uh, different than the modern uh, Chinese. So we need to translate from different type of format into modern plain Chinese. <clears throat> and then we translate it from modern Chinese into modern English. Uh, here is an example. Uh, you can see um, <clears throat> on the right side, there's the picture of a, a, a scroll, which is the main text is written um, by a bronze script. Um, I think most people can read the signature, but it's hard to recognize uh, the main text. Um, that's how the the result we recognize it. So we recognize it to, you know, the uh, modern Chinese script, and then we translate it from this to modern Chinese here. And and even this, I think some people might still feel hard to to understand and then we translate to english and we don't show the second part in our uh, metadata we only uh, display the first part and the, the third part the original main text in chinese and the translation in english <coughs> I think I need to speed up. There's some um, <clears throat> a tool we use for uh, recognize different script. See, there's sky, tian, the word, and there's different script from uh, oracle bone script, frozen bronze script, seal script, and the others. And that's the other uh, online tool we, we use. And that's the other. <clears throat> okay, and talk about uh, seal content. Seal is uh, kind of special uh, in traditional uh, China. It's important um, for like uh, calligraphy or painting artwork. Uh, the typical <coughs> script, the seal might be um, show you who's the creator, who's the collector, but it also contains some other important useful message. And it's also very useful for identify if um, this artwork is authentic. So if you want to fake an artwork in China, you need to fake the CO2, okay? And that's an example that uh, <clears throat> two CL in one, uh, I think there's a scroll, okay? The left one is um, the creator's name, Din Chang Ming Yin. So we just translate it. The first part is translate his name by pronunciation. 
The second part says is his seal. So this part we translate by the meaning. And the second seal is uh, <clears throat> three months Minister of Justice. Mr. Lin uh, was uh, assigned as the Mr. Minister of Justice in uh, the early uh, year of the Republic of China. But for some reason, he resigned after a very short period of time. And after that, he made this seal. So this seal also carry shows up a, 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 a small fact of the history. So this, this is the seal, okay? And for this seal, we translate um, by the meaning, uh, not just the pronunciation. And uh, that's the tool we use. We also find a, a, a a tool, online tool, which can help us to identify um, the script on the seal. Uh, you know, the script on the seal is sometimes a very freestyle, so you need a lot more help. Uh, on the left side is uh, <clears throat> a scroll in our collection. Um, creator is Liang Qi Chao, and we find, um, you know, there's we zoom it in. That's the seal we find on the scroll, and we are we can find it on the website too. So if so, we know what it says in this seal. Help us to translate and also to identify the seal. Okay, uh, we use control vocabulary in subject field, uh, as we mentioned uh, earlier. Um, we have two monolingual control vocabulary uh, fields, and we use uh, library congress, thesaurus, uh, graphic materials, which we widely use in uh, our other collections, because our digital collection mostly mostly are about uh, photos, negative and 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 slides. So uh, we use this to describe the content of, you know, graphic materials. And the other is Library of Congress Name Authority file. We use it for proper names. And for this collection, we find uh, we found the uh, artist and architecture thesaurus, which is a good fit to this collection because it's uh, artwork. And uh, we surprise, surprisingly found that um, they have a project to make this uh, thesaurus um, in different language. And one of uh, uh, language is in Chinese. It's a collaboration between, uh, I think it's Getty and, and Taiwan. So it called AAT Taiwan. Uh, this uh, example we use TGM. There's a scroll, we can see a tiger and some rock. So in this field, we filled in tigers and rocks. <clears throat> so most, uh, mostly we use this uh, uh, thesaurus to, to describe the the painting or fan painting in this collection, not for those uh, calligraphy works. Okay, that's uh, how we use library compass name uh, authority file. This is an example. Um, <clears throat> the title I, I forgot to mention that most of our title. Um, Professor Joe, um, this probably happened to uh, many other collectors. They put a tag on the scroll on each uh, his collection um, to describe what is this about. And I think that's our uh, first hand original source of the collection. So we actually use that what we get from tag as our title. And even there are some 
may might some error or some inaccurate, we still stick onto it. So we can see the creator is Hefei Li, Li Hefei, okay? But in um, uh, LC name authority file, we can see Li Hongzhang, Li Hongzhang is different. <coughs> but actually the, the, uh, uh, the record in um, LC name authority is actually his, his real name. Should I say that? His, his name. Hefei is where he was born. And sometimes we call a person um, by his title, uh, his ranking, or uh, where he's born in, in China to respect him. So that's why he called Li Hefei. But we don't put Li Hefei in the field of artist. Uh, we use um, uh, same records in uh, uh, library compress name authority file if we can find one. Okay, um, there's uh, the portal of AAT art and architecture thoras uh, and AAT Taiwan. Um, AAT, it, this is from their website. Uh, the purpose of the AAT is to be used to improve the access to information for our architecture and other material culture. And uh, AAT Taiwan serve for the same purpose. I believe it's only in um, different language. And that's the, the creation of AAT Taiwan is the collaboration between Taiwan e-learning and digital archives program, which is actually sponsored by uh, the government uh, between them and um, Getty Research Institute. And the first initiative initiated in late 2008 to build a Chinese version of this thesaurus. And by the end of 2009, um, AT Taiwan has contained more than 10,000 concepts, and I believe they are still expanding. That's uh, the uh, uh, example of how we use uh, AAT and AAT Taiwan. So we, you can see this uh, calligraphy work um, is seal script and is hanging scroll, and we have parallel records in subject AAT and AT Taiwan. Okay, I think that's um, my presentation for today. Um, uh, the the process we build the bilingual metadata. Um, we we need ex a lot of research. We need a lot. We need expertise in different area which make this, um, cre this, the creation of this collection very a big challenge to us. But we also know and we believe um, what we did enhance the value, the access of this uh, collection to, to make it more convenient to, for uh, many users around the world to access this uh, uh, collection. And we, that we created that more than 10 years ago. And when we did that, we talk about, discuss about the like machine translation and it's kind of not doable back to then, but you know, technology improves every day. So, Nowadays, will machine translation will help, you know, and the hot topic about the AI, does AI will help people to, to do this more in a more efficient way. Um, and also there are, is other than uh, AAT, where there uh, will have more 
multilingual tutorial project in the future? Uh, we don't know, but I think that's worth to have more discussion. And thanks everyone. Um, we are open to Q&A and uh, thanks for um, listening. Thank you. Thank you for the great presentation. We already got some questions in the Q&A session. First is, uh, can you please send the name of, names of the tool to identify scripts and seals? Uh, this one. Uh, how about Suva Zidian? That's the dictionary of calligraphy. Uh, maybe I, I can find find it and send uh, um, <clears throat> the link to Greta and you can you can share it to whoever who is interested. Okay, sounds good. Um, the second question is from Tang Li. Has, the, has this collection been evaluated by any researcher in art history in the U.S. who researched and translated the metadata? Uh, I think we have a professor in our department. Um, it's not official. She, she, she saw our collection and invited me to a class to have a presentation. But it's not really evaluated by her or any other researcher uh, in um, in the states. And most research was be done by myself and one of my students who is also from um, Taiwan. Um, I do most uh, recognize and uh, translate from uh, Asian Chinese to modern Chinese and she, she um, did the part of Chinese to English. Okay, thanks. And the next question is, will links to the tools in the slides be provided? Yeah. Um, yes, I will follow up with the links. Okay, okay. The next question is, how many staff worked on this project and in what roles? Uh, I will say, well, that our director and uh, uh, our director of the library go to Madison to to acquire this uh, collection, and then put them into our special collection. And special collection before I was on board, I think the director of special collection and his student do some basic paperwork. Uh, you know some original description and records of the the uh, collection so that's uh, our the 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 data i have when i start this project and then most of uh, work of digitizing and creating metadata was done by me and my student and also uh, the the head of um, digitization unit. Uh, Christina, she also helped us to create a template. That's, that's, that's it. Hi, Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, hi, Lin. this is very interesting uh, presentation. Um, I see in the uh, chat, uh, Tani, uh, he has a comment. He said, he said, like the Chinese artist name in the title, in the title field, um, it should be the order should be Chinese surname, Xing, and then first name Ming, Xing Ming. Uh, so I'm just 
you know, bring bring it to you. This um. Okay, shim. <laughs> yeah. We didn't do that. You know, in Chinese, <laughs> in Chinese column or in English. You know, you mean in in title field or in... English title field. The English title field it should be the Chinese surname and the first name, the order. Oh, okay. I'm not doing uh, much uh, Chinese, uh, you know, cataloging. So, okay. But Tang, I think he probably he's doing a lot. And also, uh, I have a question. Um, like, uh, you have bilingual fields for most of your metadata fields. Yeah. So how how does the system contenting? How does it deal with uh, indexing? Do you need like extra indexing, like make special requests to have the uh, Chinese no. field to be indexed? No, I think um, content DM support Unicode, so there's no problem to index Chinese. <clears throat> you you mean like all the Chinese fields can be indexed? Yeah. Like, yeah. Content DM? Yes. Yeah, you just oh, even the it. local fields, the not local fields that you don't need to make like request to no, no. yeah the fields. I, I think even in English field, you can still put into Chinese. There's no limit of um language as at, at least there's no limit to Chinese. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> Uh, there's a question in Q&A session. Would you like to share the detail of the metadata input guidelines? Detail of, uh, I, I don't quite follow the, what kind of detail? Let me check. Maybe it meant- uh, Oh, sure, sure, sure. The guideline. I, <laughs> I, I, I can share, I can send you the guideline to, I will send to Greta and, you can, again, send to whoever who wants it. We can, maybe we can just deposit it into Calasys and share it with everyone. We can deposit the guideline and your slides and the video recording, all of this to, you know, to Calasys, to Calasys IR. Maybe. Then Greta can send it out. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Is it really time consuming to do the research and you know, to do the translation? Because this like, involves in-depth knowledge. <laughs> like the scripts are pretty hard to read sometimes. Uh, uh, it, it's tough. Actually, my major in college is Chinese literature. So I supposed to have some background on it, but, uh, is I I only know some basic. I still need to get some tool to help me to finish the work. Yeah. Did you consult you know, uh, external ex experts besides the faculty member uh, you mentioned in your college in your university? Uh, okay. We yeah mm -hmm. we I we kind of lack of a uh, resource. Um, I do seek out. Um, I don't actually remember uh, what happened. I, I do seek out some help to some um, friends in Taiwan and then introduce me to some another expert in China. But I, I don't bring everything to him. I only have some like some seal I couldn't really recognize. So I send an email to the person who tried to help me, but that's his uh, uh, individual researcher. Yeah. Thank you. And we don't really have, I don't think we really have an expert in UW at least I don't know who and where I can find a person, so. Well, thank you, Lee. Uh, there's another question. Where did you get information for the biographies? Uh, 
first we try to Google it. And when you Google it, you can find resource from different places. And of course, we uh, use um, the more authentic resource. For example, if we find a, a biography from like National Palace Museum, I believe it's more authentic than what I found on a, I don't know who is blog, you know. And then we we put them together to decide um, what import are more uh, necessary than the others, and we compose them to to uh, as a biography for our collection. Well, thank you, Lee, uh, for sharing your experience in this great project, and thank you, everyone, for your questions. Um, I think uh, we're about the time, and we appreciate your time um, for joining us. Uh, I would like to remind you that this was the second webinar in our speaker series. We will have a third webinar coming up soon. We'll be sharing more information about this upcoming event. So keep an eye. Keep, a, keep an eye um, for updates. And thank you for joining us today. Slides and recordings will be available on Colossus soon, and it will send follow-up email for your questions and those tools, the links to, for those tools. Uh, we hope you find the today's webinar informative and valuable, and have a great day. We'll see you in the next webinar. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.